All right, so this is just a general discussion on logarithmic functions. All right, so given f of x equals a to the x, just a normal exponential function where a is greater than 0, but a is not 1, let's find the inverse. All right, so remember those four steps? You'd say, all right, step 1, you'd get y equals a to the x. And step 2, um, remember we switch x and y, so you have x equals a to the y. And then step 3, our goal was to isolate y. Okay, so now we'll use the definition of a logarithm to rewrite this as y equals log base a of x using the definition of a logarithm. Remember, this was exponential notation, so rewriting it in logarithmic notation would look like that. And then step four would be, all right, well, that's f inverse. Everybody cool? All right, so that means this function down here, which we're going to call a logarithmic function, is the inverse of this function up here, which, which as we know, is called the exponential function, All right? And so exponential functions have this form, f of x equals a raised to some exponent, okay? And for, obviously a has to be greater than zero, a greater than zero, and a not equal to one. And then for logarithmic functions, uh, again, a has to be greater than zero and not equal to one, but also the argument has to be greater than zero and they are inverses of each other, inverse functions of each other. All right, so let's look at their graphs. All right, so everybody can graph y equals 2 to the x. All right, we've graphed that already. You know, when x is 0, we're at 1. When x is 1, we're up at 2. When x is 2, we're up at 4, so forth and so on. When x is negative 1, we're at a half. Okay, so remember, it kind of comes through and goes like such. All right, we're cool with that. All right, so now let's graph. There's a couple ways to do it. I'm going to encourage you to rewrite this uh, logarithmic function in exponential form. So think of the g of x as a y, you know, y equals log base 2 of x, and then rewrite it as 2 to the y is equal to x. All right, then when you do your your um, your t chart. Right? We can say, all right, this is x, this is y. We're going to plug numbers in for y. So when y is zero, x is one. When y is one, x is two. When y is two, x is four. When y is three, x is eight. When y is negative one, x is a half. So forth and so on. Follow me? Okay, so this time we're going to go through 1, 0. And then when x is 2, we're up here at 1. When x is 4, we're up here at 2. When x is a half, we're down at negative 1. So this graph is going to do something like this. Right, see that? Because if you had heard 8 before we ever get up to 3. So exponential functions, remember, had this horizontal asymptote. Well, logarithmic functions have this, have a vertical asymptote, which I'll abbreviate as VA. Okay, in this case, the vertical asymptote is x equals 0, because x can never be 0, right? No matter what number you plug in for y, uh, you're never going to raise 2 to some number to give it equal to 0. So we've got this vertical asymptote x equals 0. And the horizontal asymptote for the, for the red graph here was y equals 0, because it never hit the x-axis. The domain for the exponential function, the domain for f, was all real numbers. But the domain, right, the domain of g, okay, and this is g, the domain of g is going to be 0 to infinity. All real numbers greater than 0. Right, and that makes sense because remember, we want our argument to be positive numbers. Right? That's from the definition of the logarithm. The range of g would be all real numbers. Everybody see that? Every y value is being used. It's forever up, for, forever up, forever down. I mean, it's going to hit all the y values, it's just going to take a while because it grows so slowly. All right, and remember, if we had the, 
the line y equals x coming through here. That's the line y equals x. That the graph of f of x and the graph of g of x here, since they're inverses of each other, they need to be symmetrical with respect to that line y equals x. Everybody see they are? Here's a question. Which function, the exponential function or the logarithmic function, grows at a faster rate? Which one increases at a faster rate? That's right, it's the exponential function. That's why we say um, things grow exponentially. When, and that means that they're moving very fast. If we said things were going logarithmically, well, that's going to take forever <laughs> for anything exciting to happen. All right, because the logarithmic functions grow so slowly. All right, let's uh, talk about domain of logarithmic functions real quick. So find the domain of f of x equals the log base 3 of x minus 4. Remember, the argument for a logarithm needs to be what type of numbers? It needs to be positive. So your argument's x minus 4 here, so we need x minus 4 to be greater than 0. Okay, because we want to be positive. Right. When you solve that for x, you get, alright, x has to be greater than 4. That's the domain, right? So the domain, we would just write it as 4 to infinity. Right? You take the argument, set the argument greater than zero because that's what you want to have happen, and then you solve for x, and you say, all right, that's the domain. That's it. All right, what about the second one down here? Uh, lo natural log of x plus 7. Well, what's the argument for your logarithm? Yeah, it's just x. Right? It's not x plus 7, it's just the x. Right? So the domain down here would be x is greater than zero. Right? Zero to infinity. Everybody see that? The plus 7 here, if you remember a while back, was just a, a vertical shift up of 7 units. So the, the, the graph of natural log of x, whatever it is, w everything would just move up 7 units. Right? And remember the, the minus 4 inside the parentheses here, the x minus 4, that would be a, a shift uh, which direction? That's right, it would be a shift to the right. It would take the, the log of x in base 3 and just move that graph 4 units to the right. All right, so that's the idea on finding the domain of, uh, of logarithmic functions. You just have to worry about what the argument is because you want that to be greater than zero. All right, so last concept. All right, so here's your function. Find f inverse. So just go through the steps. Step one, I get y equals 2 to the x minus 3. All right, step two is just switch the x's and the y's. And step three is isolate y. All right, so to do that, we need to do what first? That's right, we need to add the three. All right, and now to isolate y, uh, we're written in exponential notation here, so we need to write it in logarithmic notation. So y equals log. What's the base? The base would be two, and what's the argument? x plus three. Now, if I write it like that, is that okay? No, because the argument would just be x, right? So make sure you put parentheses around this x plus 3 because the entire argument is x plus 3. Everybody with me? Very, very important. We uh, get those parentheses in there to say, hey, all of this is the argument. All right, so y is isolated. So step four is go back to function notation. And we now have the inverse. This function down here is the inverse of this function up here. If you were to graph 2 to the x minus 3 and then graph log base 2 of x plus 3, graph those two functions, they would be symmetrical with respect to the line y equals x. You should try that in your calculator. Right? See how that works. Put this in as y1, put this one in as y2, and for y3, put in y equals x. Right? And they, these two should be symmetrical with respect to that y equals x line. All right, so that's the idea on logarithmic functions. Um, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.